All right, hello, it's time for something a little bit sciencey. We're looking at the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein for the Omicron variant. So Brady Johnston is the developer or the main developer of the molecular nodes add-on for Blender. We met at the conference once or twice, can't quite remember how many times, but we've spoken online. They're a uh, watcher of my videos in the past as well. I think of Brady as like, a, like an ever-present mentor or guru that's kind of hovering around the Blender space. I like to hop into my server every now and again and help people out as well. It's really sweet. Anyway, I really wanted to play with the molecular nodes add-on at some point and Brady was interested in seeing what kind of style stuff I could come up with in the past but I just never really got around to it you know with all the uni stuff that kicked off I just couldn't find a time slot for it that is until last night when I thought you know what sod it let me jump in installed the molecular nodes add-on through the extensions platform now I don't actually know if it's properly supported in 5.0 because on the extensions platform it says 4.5.9 but I'm trying it in 5.0 anyway now what this does is it lets you import protein model data from online sources so for example under the scene properties as a molecular node section and from here you can choose the source and I don't know much about this by the way and probably it would be better if I did a video about it after I knew more about it so the PBD the protein data Data bank is one method of doing it and what's great about this is you don't need to download something yourself so on the protein data bank website specifically the rcsb pdb website you can search for them now i know in the blender science community there are a lot of protein nerds and i don't really know a whole lot about this but interestingly i am actually quite interested in the covid spike protein because for my personal studies i'm interested in knowing how or rather to what degree the spike protein binds to ace2 receptors on gloma cells in carotid bodies and how that can affect the sense of uh, breathlessness that's not something I'm actively studying, but I've been reading some papers on it because if you don't know, I've got like a long lasting post COVID issue and it's an unexplained thing. So though I'm not actively working with proteins in the way that someone like Brady is, I'm interested in reading about their behaviors. And there's something quite nice about taking something that is like an interesting focus and then trying to represent it in 3D because that's like what we do with all kinds of 3D art. We just take things we're interested in and then try and turn it into something like evocative in some way. So what you do is you take the code from their database website. In this case, I search for the spike protein, Omicron. The code here is 8UPX. So the code is like a little address. Shove it into the PDB value and then uh, with the right file type here, press fetch and it will bring it in, it'll import it. Now, typically what's supposed to happen is under the entity section, it's supposed to keep track of the objects. So if I hide this and fetch it again, you'll see it's listed here and I can actually centralize it. If I select it, I'm gonna do set origin to geometry and then selection to cursor. You see that's been brought in. It has a default style. This is set onto style cartoon. You can add extra styles. And there is also a default material, which I I've modified slightly which is why it's slightly transparent one thing i like to do is i like to attach things to objects that i'm working with even if they're assigned through geometry nodes what i mean by that is sometimes if you're working with materials that are assigned in geometry nodes you won't see them on like the object which makes them a little bit hard to get to but sometimes i like to assign them to the object anyway just to make it easy to catch them again from the material list so you see i modified the transparency while working on doing a custom style so if you press the plus button to add a new style you have a selection of different options i believe actually the spheres is the default but cartoon is good because it'll give you the indications for the kind of peptide structures your uh, your beta plated sheets and your alpha helices if you know what i'm saying sorry i won't do that again um, so we can add spheres and you can compound the styles as well. So you can have more than one active. What it will do is in the geometry nodes, it will combine the effects. So once those have been added, you can actually just go in and modify them if you like, which is what I did for this one. So let me just reduce that transparency down again. So I haven't made a custom style yet, but I was looking at the presets thinking if I personally, like if I want to look at a protein, what style do I want? I want to be able to see the descriptions of the structures. So that's the cartoon style, but I also want to know where atoms are present. But as it turns out, it's probably not a surprise. The proteins are extremely difficult things to look at and light. And I always like a lighting challenge, you know me. So if something is very uniformly lit like this, you know, I mean, it's just a freaking mess. Like, where am I even looking? You can't even tell like where things are like concave or convex. It just looks too flat. What I figured was it's better only lighting part of the protein, ideally not backlit because you get too confused with all of the Fresnel like light on the inside. So forward bias. However, if it's biased towards one direction too much and you're going to get confused again, because if I remove the lower light, you'll see here, there's too much happening below. So it's not really like other objects where you can just like rely on a nice strong soft light 
when looking at proteins like this, it's like you have to find a balance. And that if you're going to lie at one side, you have to mellow out the rest of it, if that makes sense. Now, you might have seen this here. This also works. But the only reason it works even though it's much darker, obviously, is that we're just kind of hiding the rest of it. So that's what I figured out so far, is a little structure like this. We might not even need the bag. Let me just check that. No, uh, bag doesn't make much of a difference. So I could probably remove that. Now I've got them sort of in a ring where we can rotate them so we can see what works best. They are slightly offset though. Too far behind again, too confusing, low down. Balance out the front becomes more readable, especially with the helices. So it is interesting like finally playing with proteins because it's kind of getting me to think in a different way about like readability. This is also an awful graphic camera at the moment because again the complexity I think is it a bit more readable if it's flat. Perspective camera like this may be better for like describing the concavity. I think it might be a matter of personal preference there to be honest unless, I haven't tried this yet, but unless we really minimize the focal length and then brought it in too much. Yeah, but that would kind of make it much more obvious in terms of like the distance between elements. So I think you've got two approaches there when it comes to the readability after a certain degree of light's been established. Now, obviously this is like three-dimensional rendering light. It would be much easier to read proteins in like a flat light environment. But what I'm looking at here is just the artistic use case of it. So this would be more of like a, what I would call a studio cage dioramic light study. And then we'd be able to zoom in and get some cool like captures of elements like this. So this would be part of like the receptor binding area of the protein. Letting the render resolve a bit as a symptom of using my physical definition material on this. You can actually see some like imperfection on there. It would be cool. I mean, I've noticed that there's some bloom going on as well because I've got the compositing active. It would be cool to do something slightly volumey as well, where where there is a greater density of activity, there could be a slight volume going on in the space. That would, again, not be for scientific readability, but just for a visual presentation. Now, the bloom kind of already does that as a bit of an analog, I suppose, if I reduce the threshold. See what I mean? Where it's almost kind of holographic-y around the space. Bring a bit of the backlight back in. Now, let's try something different. That's more of a studio cage type thing, like we said. Let me just reset this a bit. I'm going to save this and do something more environmental. So let me delete all of that. By the way, the wireframes for these are really cool. Okay, Afterglow, Studio 7, Modular Workspaces, Unpack, let's organize things as well. So this is going to be really weird because now we've got the protein in like a proper physical context, which is not where it's usually supposed to be. So we're actually going to give that a little bit of time to resolve because it's going to be quite complex. So this would answer the question of what does a semi-holographic protein look like physically? Now, because the alpha value is so low for the actual atoms here, it's being drowned out. So I'm going to increase them a bit. It's quite difficult to read. So let me try something a bit more drastic. Might be a good opportunity to test a new display case stuff as well. So let's move you up. Workspaces selected only with the display case active. There we go. Let me remove the studio ceiling light. Hmm, quite harsh, but maybe more readable. Now we've got like two strong strips above. Zoom in a bit more. What if we bake like a visibility gradient into the protein? That's an idea. Hang on. Let me increase the focal length of this a bit more. Hang on, I'm going to swap this out actually. I just got rid of uh, Studio Environment 7 because I'm going to do something that I'm doing with 6 quite a lot in recent videos. Let's get 6 in here. Unpack you. Tighten the gradient to the back. So we've got a little bit of a backlit behind there. Ah, that's cool. Okay. Because what we're doing here is we can, you know what I said about like balancing, if you're doing one side, you have to do the other side. We're kind of doing that inverted here. So if we're lighting the top, we can backlight the bottom and that might make it readable. Let's just move this sideways a bit. In that case, actually here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the color, I think. Yeah, because I don't need the color for what I'm doing. So in that case, we're now making everything like 100% alpha again. So that should be visible. But let me turn them down like darker. What if I make it metallic? So they'll look quite nice against the backdrop. You see, if I make them too reflective, I think they're a bit too dark. They cloud it a bit. I think 0.5 is a nice balance. So if I set the uh, rotation, so we'll normalize this so I can do some cool vector stuff to it. Let me get rid of all the stuff I don't need in this material. Okay, so what I've done here is I've made a texture coordinate node, separate X, Y, Z, passing the Z for a color ramp. Now passing that through the alpha on my main material. And I'm just wondering whether there's anything to this. I see a lot of darkness here. Now, what is that from? Is that geometry or is that AO or something else? 
I think there might have been transparent passes. That's something you need to keep in mind when you see like random black areas. If you've got a lot of like light paths passing through things, you just need to check the, the max number of bounces. Okay, so we've got like our atom field, which to be fair, actually, if you slice stuff apart of that, that would make a really cool background. Like if I did a 4K of that. So now I've got the gradient, I can scrub the structures back in. Although I need to do a little bit of math stuff to get this right. So we can gradiate it a little bit better. I think it's interesting. It's making me think now that we can do like the geometry proximity thing we've done a bit in the past to be able to highlight and therefore selectively show the structures while leaving the atoms also present. I'm not sure if I'll do that right now, but do you know what I mean? We'll be able to have like a sphere or any other structure and just kind of move it to where in the protein you want to be able to highlight the structures. So it will almost be like a looking glass, which I think would be a cool idea. Let's do a tiny bit of recoloring. Hey, what if we do the inverse? So we hide the atoms around the structures. I suppose that's an option too. I don't know if it looks as cool, but I suppose it's doable. It's kind of like the patterns are emerging from this atomic cloud. Okay, well, let's try something else. We've got quite a lot of light going on here. It's rendering quite slowly. So let's take our protein structure and the camera. And we're going to move to the wall on the far side. I'm actually going to do a little trick of mine and I'll do it down here actually. I'm going to look at both of these in the wireframe because it helps me to see what's actually going on. So let's do this one at a time. I want to phase it with the wall a bit. I don't know what I'm doing, but I just want to see what it looks like. Now let's bring that closer. Let's get quite a strong bit of backlight there now. Let's remove the alpha changes. Unless we don't remove the alpha changes. Oh, hang on, let me remove it for the points. Neutralize the color on it again. Let me do alpha for the main structures, but let me swap it to a different axis. Wrong axis, let's try X. I'm wondering about doing a transparency from the wall outwards, just out of curiosity. So that's maybe the inverse of what I want, but still kind of interesting. Let's reset the rotation on that, because that will effectively straighten up the gradient, like making it parallel with the wall. It's kind of trippy. If I select the kind of edit mode data, then it should preserve the vector. So I should be able to slide the data in and out of the gradient. Oh, that's way too laggy because it's a lot of data. But you can see how the alpha fade maintains against the wall. Weird, I don't quite think I've done renders like this before. It's, it's a little bit esoteric. I'll tell you what I like though. It's in the small moments of these renders that I think some really interesting things happen, like almost cropping this. Like if I then re-grab the floor, I can phase that back and forth. Now the wall itself was slightly rough and that makes things a little bit more difficult. So I'm changing the properties of it. Let's bring it out into the open and just let it like bathe in the light. Again, I like how in terms of backlighting, like with the studio walls, we effectively get a negative hide light. And I think that helps with readability. I've reduced the alpha of the atoms to point one, two, one. And I don't mind something like this actually. It's kind of like, it's a soft bathing. And if we zoomed in, we'd still be able to see like the, the elements hanging around like a little cloud. Yeah, it's very weird trying to light it realistically for something that's so abstract. I've just put a modified version of my scan lines material from Afterglow on the structure. Again, difficult to read like as a whole, but actually up close does look pretty sick from like a wallpaper perspective. So I think that might be a good starting point for some artwork actually. I just love how it sits in the light. What if I bring it down a bit so it's almost like touching the floor. So we get a little bit of the reflection, the protein in there. So it's like the atomic structure is like touching like mirroring into itself in some way. Let's add a teeny bit more light. Cool, I don't know. I think there's lots of angles to take this art-wise. It's just really interesting working with like hyper complex structures as a challenge. There's just like so many angles to look at it from and it really depends on like if you are doing it for readability, what's supposed to be highlighted, like what's actual useful information. Will it be clear to people like what part of the structure we're looking at? Probably not from a close up. But I suppose you could do a couple of renders. You could do like a close up of one area and then a further out one. That's so kind of like a map kind of highlighting, pointing to like the part of the domain we're looking at, for example. What if I make it really small here? Hang on, let's set the origin to the cursor make it teeny tiny. I suppose there's something that could be said about the perceptive scale of something. And then when we look at it as a large object, it's very chaotic. When we look at it as something that's small, the like arms of the spike protein become a bit more distinctive. Interesting. Maybe I'll do some cool renders of this and save it for some backgrounds. All right, cool. We've made it to the end of this exploration video. Put some kind of sciencey like DNA microbe emoji in the comments so I can see which of you did make it. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.